What's up, everyone? Welcome to Unmasked, where things are discovered, uncovered, brought to the light, and made known. I'm your host, Lamar Barrett, coming live to you from PG County, Maryland. If you're interested in finding out about the untold stories behind being a college coach, this is the show for you. Being a former assistant men's college basketball coach for 16 years, there are so many untold stories behind the scenes in the life of a college basketball coach. Now, Let's unmask them. Today's guest is an outstanding player, a longtime assistant coach, a young, bright future head coach in this business, and a Raffle Virginia native, Shane Nichols. Now, Shane, you know, like I said, he had an outstanding career where, you know, for three seasons, great first year started off at St. Peter's College up in New Jersey. We had a great freshman year, transferred to Watford. Uh, we had a chance to uh, play for Coach Mike Young. Scored over 1,400 points in those three seasons um, at Wofford. So he did an outstanding job there. And then he went on to play professionally. And from there, he came back to his alma mater, worked a couple of years for Coach Young at Wofford, where, of course, you know, they went to the NCAA tournament. He's always done a great job there. And then from there, he went up to Niagara to work with Joe Mahalik for one year before moving on to Hofstra uh, for, for another year. Um, uh, actually, uh, two years with Joe Mahalik uh, at Ben Hofstra. And then from there, he's at this current spot, Murray State, where he spent the last five seasons, where they've done a terrific job at Murray State, producing not only great men, but great uh, you know professional basketball players as well. I just want to say uh, welcome to the show, Shane. I appreciate you, Lamar. You know, we, we go way back. So, I, I, you know, I definitely wanted to, definitely wanted to help you out on this one for sure. Appreciate that, man. So, look, Shane, you know what? Let's go ahead and get unmasked. Um, you know, and, and I like to always ask this question coming into this. Um, you know, like, you you probably – you jump in and you were a player, so you've seen that side. You've been in – your dad was a coach, and, and now your brother's a coach. And, but, like, you know, when you get that first job and you're thrown into the fire, like, there's no handbook to being a college coach. Like, you think you know it from the player side, but there's no handbook. Nobody tells you. Go gives you no direction. You know, tell me about that first time you went back, start coaching at Wofford for that first day, first week, first month, after you're done with human resources and, and, and orientation. Like, what was that like? Um, it, it was different because I wasn't too far removed from the team, the players that I played with. So I, I think it was two years, two or three years from them. And – you know, immediately I had to separate myself from the player and become more professional and as a coach. So, you know, that, that was, that was uh, different at first. Um, you know, guys from going, going from being my teammate, you know, their freshman year to now calling me <laughs> Coach Nichols, um, you know, it was different. But, you know, I, I just tried to handle it as professional as I could. Uh, and, and, you know, from my playing days, they respected me. Um, so, you know, I, I was really a sponge and just tried to learn as much as I could from Coach Young and, and the other assistants on the staff, which, you know, Mark Prosser, he's, a, uh, he's at Western Carolina head coach there, and uh, uh, Paul Harrison, who's associate head coach at, at Bucknell. So, you know, I had great guys to learn from. That's awesome, man. Again, at least you had guys to learn from. Some guys just, they don't tell you anything. I tell, you, um, I tell you what, um, what I struggled with at Wofford at first was, you know, it's a high academic school. So I would go out and recruit. You know, the first year I go out recruit all the time or talk to a lot of kids and I'll forget to get the transcript. <laughs> so, you know, you can't just, they can't just, you know, be eligible NCAA wise and get in. So, you know, being an academic school, that's the first thing you got to get, you know, to be able to know if you're wasting your time or not. So I would, I would, I would always forget. And then, um, you know, Coach Harrison really, really tried to help me. He said, hey, man, that's the first thing you got to get, especially at academic school. You know, so he really helped me out with that. Good stuff. Um, what was your um, – because we all know recruiting is like the lifeline of college coaching. Like, can you remember one of your best work – your best – and worst recruiting stories? Um, I'll tell you, probably the best one. I don't know if it's the best, but, like, 
you know, when I was at, when I was at Hofstra, uh, the kid uh, uh, ended up being terrific. Rokas Gustis, you know, played at Oak Hill, uh, played for Boo Williams, uh, recruited him all year, recruited him all year. Thought he was going to be high major. Um, you know, when he came on his visit, we sold the you know the diversity in New York. You know, there was a lot of Lithuanians in New York at the time, and you know, we 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 knew we needed to have them. Uh, so every everywhere he was, we had we had stuff that reminded him of 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 home. Lithuanian flags uh, in his room, um, pictures, all kinds of stuff, and, and I thought that really made him. Uh, feel at home and it, it was crazy because there was diehard Hofstra fans who used to come to the games all the time and they had they would bring Lithuanian flags and uh, you know he met them on this visit I think they really kind of helped him get comfortable but you know he's best uh, all-time leading rebounder there and uh, you know thousand point score so you know that that was that was different because I had never recruited uh, international kid before. Uh, probably the worst. Um, I would say, I would say it, there was a time we, we recruited a kid uh, here at Murray State. We, Murray State, we didn't get him. Uh, but his, his dad was over the top, man. <laughs> he was over the top. And so, um, uh, you know, we walk around on campus and, and, and he was just over the top with the women. I was like, Hey man, you can't say, you can't say stuff like that. You know, especially now, nowadays, and he, he pulled me to the side. He's like, coach, you, yeah, man, you know what? You're right. You're right. I can't say stuff like that. But then he would do it again. <laughs> he would do it again. And so it, it was just, it was just all night. The, the visit, the, the dinners, he was just trying to be a comedian and, to the point where coach coach felt uncomfortable. I felt uncomfortable. I was like, man, coach, I don't think we can take this kid because <laughs> his dad is just over the top, man. Like over the top. It it was just that was the, probably the worst visit I've ever had. Just he, he called me and me and the other black assistant, peanut butter and jelly. Like <laughs> like just it was just crazy, man. It was just crazy. Wow, <laughs> that's a little different right there. It's like the parents are over the top. Yeah, I mean, you know they let the kid enjoy their visit, but yeah, that's a little different right there. I felt I felt bad for the kid because like he was just sitting there quiet. Like, yeah, he's just like this. <laughs> um, say you've been in it, you know, you you you've been around basketball all your life, so you know about it. But now you get to the college level, and you know, uh, you uh, you know. You, you're married now you're married and um you know so but what did you have to give up achieving your current level of success um i had to give up you know i always always wanted to be close to virginia and and hanging out with with my friends and, and stuff like that, you know, when I was at Wofford, you know, I could always go back. It was a three hour trip and, and, and hang out and just, you know, weekends, you know, weekends, like, you know, you know, you know, in this business, man, you know, it, you really don't, sometimes I think like, man, it'd be nice to just have a weekend and grill out and fight everybody over and just hang out. You know, a lot of times you can't do that. And so, you know, I, I understood, you know, to get to to be successful. I mean, there's a lot of things you got to give up, um, you know, but I, I'd really try hard not to, you know, to, uh, you know, give up family, you know, make sure, make sure I well balanced and I always want to make sure that I worked for somebody that valued that. That's awesome, man. That's what, yeah, because a lot of guys, man, like they, I don't think they understand sometimes like how important that is. And like, especially when you going through like, you know, you losses are hard on you, but then like, you know, and then that time you just said like, you can't schedule 
going on the trip. So I'm like, hey, man, we're going out to uh, Super Bowl. No, I can't go to Super Bowl. No, I'm going to – you can't do any of that stuff, you yeah. know. So that's the life of what we live. Like, how right. how we're, like, all the time. And that's what people don't understand a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Like, what's – like, when are, when are you down? Uh, never. <laughs> you yeah. Know what yeah. <laughs> you always get the question, like, after the season's over, like, what do y'all do? Are y'all done? No, nah, no, nah, we never done. Never done. <laughs> exactly. All right, going into this, we know this too, man. This is, this is an interesting question I love to ask. Like, because sometimes getting into scout reports, you know, like, when you you can do your best scout report and, like, go out and lose, like, big time. Or you can do a scout report you thought was just okay. Everyone puts their best into it, but, like, a couple of things you were missing, and you end up winning. And it's those times when you miss – like one or two things that coach turns to you and like he's ripping you or like you might say, oh, this guy doesn't make shots and he's made three or four threes. And so like, what was your best and worst scout report? Um, my best was, I'll say it's my best because it was my first one. <laughs> so my first year at Wofford, we played, uh, played in the Charleston Classic who played uh, George Mason. And that was with, uh, you know, they had they had a real good team, Luke Hancock and, you know, uh, a, a couple of those guys. I think they – I know they went – I think they might have went to the tournament, but they were really good, really good team. And uh, and we beat them. My first scout ever, we beat them. And, you know, I was feeling good, man. Like, <laughs> like yeah, I did it, man. I'm good. This, this stuff is easy. <laughs> but uh, – my worst was probably, man, I was with Hofstra. I was a Hofstra, and we played SMU. And they ran the Carolina back screen stuff. And I didn't have it. I didn't have it because we were, we were playing more zone. So I didn't, have, I didn't have that on there. And, uh, yeah, I heard, I, heard, I heard about that. I heard about that a lot. <laughs> Cause they, cause they ran it a few times and scored. So, yeah, I was, I was, I was feeling bad, man. I was feeling bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, you know, I've heard the same thing. We, we, you know, something we have, we share in common is we both work for Coach Mahalik. I mean, he's like he is one of the most detailed guys. I would say that, like, he's locked in. You're gonna be prepared. His teams are gonna be prepared when you go out, and that's what he wants. He don't want a, a stone unturned. And so when it is unturned, he's going to let you know about it. But it only helps you in the long run. You know, it's not anything that hurts you, but it makes you, like, always be aware the next right. time you have a scout report because you definitely don't want to make that mistake again. No question. He helped, he's helped me a bunch as far as attention to detail, um, you know, just, just readiness. And, you know, I, I don't – and he knows and I know, I mean, we lost that game by 40. If I had that play on there, it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> I understand, Shane. I understand. Um, biggest challenge you've experienced since you've been in in um, in college basketball since you've been coaching? Um, probably, probably when we got to Hofstra. You know, there was four players on the roster in late April, so we had a complete rebuild. Um, that was probably the, the hardest we've had to work. I've had to work um, to get it turned around, you know, as far as recruiting, just, you know, the culture. Um, that, that was probably a big challenge. First year we won 10 games, second year we won 20. Um, and, you know, again, that's another thing, a valuable experience uh, to be able to say that you can, you know, that you were part of a rebuild. Um, you know, that it's it's not easy to do. I totally agree with you. I went through that similar situation to Old Dominion. So I, I definitely know what you're talking about. We went from five to 18 wins. So, and as a matter of fact, it was the same year. It was the same year. Yeah. You guys did job at Niagara. We go we go down to Old Dominion. So I, I know exactly what you're talking some, about. Some long nights, ain't it? <laughs> long nights, long nights. Um. You know what? I, I've seen you from afar. I know, you know, I've I've seen you. Yeah, you're 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 very you're a great recruiter, but it's more than that. Um, 
with you, very good basketball. Especially I've seen a lot of the things John Morant said about you, you know, from, from you know, working out with you and things of that nature and some of the other guys who played, um, you know, at Murray State. So do you ever find there are things about you that people might misunderstand? Like, what are they? Um, I, I think, I think maybe, you know, I think maybe some people might misunderstand that, you know, on the road, um, you know, out recruiting, I'm really, I'm kind of quiet and reserved and kind of off to myself. And I don't know what people to take it as, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just my nature. Like once you get to know me and, and I, you know, get a, get a rapport with you. I mean, you know, I, I talk your head off, but um, I just feel like I got to pay attention to what I'm doing. And a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff in my head, you know, a lot of stuff's going on and I just want to kind of focus in, you know, not saying that I won't talk, but um, it's just, I don't know if people think that, you know, I'm cocky, or standoffish or what, but, you know, it's just kind of my nature is probably misunderstood. Well, I just know this though, hey, the way you do it is great. You, 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 get, you get production done. I mean, I don't see it that way. Like you said, once you get to know you, that's a totally, you know, totally different. I don't, that's what I said. People, a lot of times they look at individuals and they judge and have no idea, mm -hmm. you know, like Speedy Claxton comes in mind. He's a similar guy like that. Brian yeah. Stiff. Guys like that that I know, I just throw that name out is everyone thinks, man, they quiet. They don't say anything. But, I mean, you, you're there to do your job and that's understandable. Some guys can, you know, they like to talk because most of them come in and a lot of times the kids that you're recruiting, some of these high majors are recruiting anyway and so like their job like they think it's easy they can come in at the last minute they just yeah. they're, you know they're definitely a little bit from you from what you you're gonna actually evaluate these kids and make sure you're getting what's best for your program more no than question. anything else no question so like you you um we're all educators in this man you you were a player um you know what it's like to go through it as, as a player so what you probably should have heard from some assistant coaches or things that you were when you were with assistant coaches that help you out um to become a better person but like and I always say this I love when kids come into um college 17 18 19 years old their parents drop them off I always thank them for doing a great job of rearing them I never say uh raise you raise cattle you you're from Rafa Virginia so you know about you know you, you don't you raise animals you don't rear them so I mean, you rear you rear you rear kids. You don't raise mm -hmm. kids. So, um, what would um, what would you try to do, or what would you try to teach your players besides basketball? Um, you know, the thing about me is, you know, the, the players the players here um, know that I'm gonna keep it a hundred, honest with them every day. Um, you know, I, I, I admit, I, I tell them, I tell them, you know, I'm blunt. And I think a, a lot of times they respect me for that. Because um, I tell them, I ain't going to tell you what you want to hear. And so, you know, if a kid, if a kid, you know, is not doing what he's supposed to do, you know, in the classroom, I'm going to let him know. And I'm going to say, hey, you're going to sit in here, give me your phone. Uh, we're going to get this done, you know. I, I try to show them with my time how much I care about them. You know, by how much time and and care I put into them. So, um, you know, definitely, definitely try to teach them. You know, any mistakes that they make, or even before mistakes. You know, I try to teach them the game. Um, I'm talking, not talking about the basketball game. I'm talking about the game of life. Um, you know, things that I went through, things that, you know, mistakes that I've made, uh, really try to try to help them. And, uh, you know, they, they always know that my, my office is open, my house is open, you know, and they, they, come, they come to my office every day. You know, we, we chop it up for, for and after practice. And, you know, I get on them, but they know at the end of the day, you know, Coach Nick going to rock with them. 
you know. That's a good stuff. I and mean, that's, I mean, that's, you know, when, when, because the thing about it is they have to be able to trust somebody. Like, a lot of times, the information they share with you, they don't want to share with the coach, or they come to you to figure out how to relay it to the coach. Right. So they, they, they got to trust somebody. And it's, and, and it's not always, sometimes it may not even be the guy who recruited. They just have a genuine, you know, love for you, and they kind of just, um, you know, fall towards you. Um, just because they see what you've gone through, you were a player, how do you handle it? And then you talk about life lessons. So I think that's all good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what would you say are your best and worst memories in coaching? Um, my best – my best is probably, you know, for some of the guys that struggle. Um, seeing them, seeing them graduate, and and, and be successful. Um, you know, I, I mean, the the championships are fun. Don't get me wrong. You know, I, I enjoy those because you know all the time that you put into it, you want to see it. You want to see it come to fruition. But um, I would say, you know, just seeing them graduate, just seeing them you know, go off and, and try to be successful in life. Um, and then they, co- and then they call and, and text and, 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 you know, tell me, tell me, tell me how they're doing, you know, it's, it's, it's a good, you know, it's fun for me. Um, the worst is, the worst for me is when, you know, you try and try and try to get a kid to get it. And, you know, Hey, got to go to class. You got to, you know, you got to do your work. Hey man, you got to come in here and get extra work in. And, and they just don't want to do it. Or, you know, there's excuses. People back home saying, Hey, you know, why ain't he playing? Well, you know, he ain't telling you the truth. Um, those hard conversations are probably the worst because, you know, you want the kid to get it. I mean, you want to try to help them all. And when they don't figure it out, I mean, there's got to be decisions made <laughs> at the end of the day. It's got to be decisions made. So that's, so probably, true, man. that's probably the hardest. That's so true, man. That, I mean, that that's what people don't understand either. Like, and you, you just said, and like, they're not being truthful. And like, yeah, you need to come and see a practice and you'll know why, you know, why a lot of things go on. I tell, um, I, t- I tell people this, man, like, you know, you hear all the time people say, uh, it's all a business. It's all a business. And I got to be honest, I don't know what business, I don't know what business when you got a kid coming in your office, you know, damn near in tears because of stuff happened back home or, you know, just venting to you. You know, that's, that's family stuff. You know, so, you know, I I try to be family to them. I say it's only a business when you don't handle your business. Then you got to make business decisions. (laughs) You know what I mean? So I just, you know, I get it. There is a business side to it, um, but it's not all a business. It's not all a business. So true, man. So true. Um, you know, you talked about it a little earlier, and I don't know if it ties in. I don't know if that was stressful. I know it was tough, but, like, and it could be something else. But, like, what was the most stressful situation you you have faced? Um, probably when we got here, you know, we – first year – first year – first year was kind of tough, but we, we were – I thought we overachieved. Uh, second year was probably uh, was the first losing season we had here in 29 years, and so we were 16 and 17. Just you know, just had just had some chemistry issues, um, and you know, at that point, you know, people here is like, "Hey, what's going on? <laughs> you know, what's going on? Y- 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 y'all better." You're gonna have to win, and you know that pressure, that pressure to to win, um, you know, kind of weighed on me because 
I had never had that before. That was the first time in my career where I had been, you know, up against the wall, like, hey, you know, people are, there's rumblings, you know, there's rumblings. And so, I mean, we really, we really dug in and, and tried to right the ship. And so from the losing season the year before to the next year, we won the league and went to the tournament. You know, that turnaround there was, was euphoric, man. We were crying. We were crying. We were crying when we won the championship. So that was probably the hardest uh, for me personally, you know, being my first time. And I know, you know, it happens to a lot, a lot of people, but being my first time of really, you know, hearing the rumblings and having the pressure of having to win. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that, you would think that, like, like you said, I mean, people don't realize, like, in some places, and Murray State is one of them, they expect, they do expect you to win. Like, that's, that's how it is. You know, some places you got guys who lose forever, tell them how to keep their job. But, like, there are certain places that, you know, their, their expectations are a lot higher. Sometimes they're, like, also, like, like, look, man, winning is hard. You know, they, they don't get it a lot of time. It is very hard. Everyone is shooting for you. So that's, like you said, 29 straight winning seasons. That's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of tough. Um, this will be kind of – it could be funny. It could be – it could go either way. Like, what's the – what is the strangest thing a player has done outside of the basketball court? Strangest. Now you you did have Jamal Robinson, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that one out at you. Him and Andre, but what was the strangest? <laughs> uh, Andre, wow, Andre. <laughs> I I do remember I do remember you brought him up. I do remember Andre spent all of his all of his uh his uh, meal money, like the first two weeks of school. <laughs> and he didn't have any left for the rest of the semester. <laughs> um, man, that's a tough one. I got to think about that one. I'll come back to you on that one. Yeah, but come back, come back and, and look, and I, and I was fortunate to coach Andre for one year, so he didn't learn from that. He was still doing that another year, so. <laughs> <laughs> um. And Shane, I said it early, and I'm going to keep saying it. I think you are um, terrific young assistant. You're going to have a bright future. You work for a great guy now. Uh, you worked for, you know, Joe Mihalik. You worked uh, for Mike Young. Um, so, you know, like, you know, I don't know what the pro next progression is. You guys are doing a great job at Murray State. Who knows? You may, you may get a job. Uh, your head coach may leave and take a higher job. Who knows? But, like, if you had a chance to work for anyone in men's college basketball besides your boss, and we can say this, he loves you, he ain't trying to go nowhere, but like, who would that be? Like, who, who, who are some good guys? I know your brother's down in Florida, so he's working for, for, you know, Mike White. So I remember them when I was at Old Dominion, and they were at La Tech. But, like, who, who would you – who was some guys – I'm going to say some guys that you, like, very interested in when you see them from a coaching standpoint? Um. You know, one guy, one guy I know I definitely look up to just because of his his story and, you know, just his, you know, being in the game for so long is Leonard Hamilton. Uh, you know, I've, I've gotten a chance to hear him talk a bunch and just the knowledge that he has, especially being a, a black head coach, uh, is, is unbelievable. Um, another guy, I, I, you know, I don't know him. But every time I see him, he, he speaks to me and goes out of his way is Tony Bennett. Um, you know, I think he's an unbelievable guy. Uh, definitely, definitely have the utmost respect for him. Um, you know, those, those two guys stand out to me. Um, you know, that, yeah, obviously they're unbelievable coaches, but they're great people too. And it's interesting you say that because great people and then great family people right. and something that you like look at saying, Hey, this is what I can do. So, so those are two great family um, coaches as well. Uh, they're big into that. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of asked this question, like what's the biggest accomplishment you have experienced since you've been a college coach? I know you talked about the graduations and all that, like, but what's the, since you've been, you know, college coach, what's the biggest accomplishment? Definitely winning a game in the NCAA tournament, you know, and then, doing it the way we did it, you know, uh, 
we uh, obviously I don't I don't know who it was. I, I get I get that back. A lot of people, you know, we had quite a few people that picked us over Marquette. You know, the twelve five game, but um, just the fashion that we were able to win, you know, in double figures um, was was a lot of fun. You know, it was a lot of fun, and you know, obviously ran into a juggernaut the next next round. But we ain't gonna talk about that. But um, you know, we definitely uh, that was you know that was the second third time being to the tournament, and uh, you know, the first time winning a game. So awesome, man. Great experience there. Um, this is kind of interesting to think about it. Maybe not. It might pop right in your head. What movie or TV show title best describes your work, your, like your week? <laughs> uh, man, I, I tell you what my favorite show is, 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 is The Office. <laughs> you know, it's one of my favorite shows, man. I I, I watch it every night. <laughs> when, when after I after I watch, you know, something else, I, I turn the office on, and watch a couple episodes. So, you know, I'm in here. <laughs> I'm in here. <laughs> I like that. I like that. The Office. Hey, that, that's that's simple too, uh, and it's hilarious. Um, What's your favorite word or phrase you might use? Like, especially you're around the team or to the players, or it could be something you just use in life. Like, what's your favorite word or phrase? Um, my favorite phrase, my favorite phrase is probably, uh, we're going to find out. <laughs> I tell them, I tell them all the time in practice, you know, they're walking in walking in and I can look at somebody and tell if they ain't ready to go yet. And I, and I'll go up and ask them. And it's like, yeah, coach, I'm ready. I'm ready. I was like, all right, well, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. So <laughs> I, I, I say that a lot, uh, you know, definitely to try to motivate them and, and get them going for that day. <laughs> I like that. Like what's the best piece of advice you ever been given? And I think I might've seen this, but I'm not sure. Because if it, if it is, I know where you got it from. But what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? My best piece of advice, um, you know, I got it from I got it from uh, I got it from my 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 dad. You know, was you know competing everything you do. Um, cause you can, you'll be competing, you know, for something for the rest of your life, you know, and it always stuck with me because I mean, he's right. You know, you compete for jobs, you compete for, you know, if you, if you're working, if you're working a nine to five, you compete in there, you know, you competing for, you know, a lot of people compete for a girlfriend, <laughs> you know, compete for a wife, you know, whatever. So, you know, you got I mean, you, everything you do, man, you, you competing for something. And that's why I thought. That's why I thought I it was your dad. I thought that's why I, somehow it seemed like I read it somewhere or something. But that's why I thought it was. It was your dad. So I, I did read it somewhere. I just don't know where it was. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna ask you this question. Like you, you obviously you've had a lot of it, especially uh, as a player and now as a coach. And but like, what does success mean to you? Um. I had another quote for that, man. Success is a result, not a goal. You know, so I mean, you don't just you don't just stumble upon it. I mean, you really gotta you gotta work for it. You gotta work at it every day. Um, and you know, I mean, it's not easy. Or everybody would have it. You know, so to me, to me, it's just the it's just the end result of all your hard work. Can you say that for the people again one more time? Success is the end result of hard, all your hard work. I like that. I like that. Take note on that. Um, where is your happy place? Like, you know, you have games. It's tough games. It's, it could be a tough day, practice. It could be a tough day at work. Just a lot of stuff. But, like, where, where is your happy place? Well, um, 
it used to be, and I'm getting old now, so I can't do it, but I used to, I used to go in the gym and shoot. You know, that even when when I was playing, if I was upset at something down, that's where I would go. Um, even throughout my coaching career, um, you know, I would just go shoot, you know, as a workout or, you know, just it's what I love to do. And, you know, I still do it from time to time, but right now I just have to say, um, in my car, in my car, I spend a lot of time in my car, you know, with recruiting and whatnot, uh, turn my music on, uh, listen to podcasts, whatnot, you know, just try to, you know, be alone with my thoughts sometimes. I feel you a hundred percent on that. <laughs> um, nope, like in you, like you, you know, I've known this. You're not a self promoter. Uh, I rarely hear hear you talk about yourself, um, and that's why a lot of times I think people like yourself in this business because you don't self promote. You kind of like people like you know like don't look at it as much. And you know, if there's some self promoters in the business, like mm -hmm. they keep getting their name out there, and you know right. somehow they land jobs. But if you had to choose three adjectives to describe yourself, which would you choose? Um, fun. Uh, a worker. I work hard. And, uh, I wouldn't say it's an adjective, but I just want to enjoy life, you know? And, and this is the thing with you, like you said it earlier, you come in the gym, you smile, you speak, and then you go about your business, which right. is, you know, everybody knows, like, Shane is a great guy, like, it, but you then you come in and you work hard. So, like, mm -hmm. all of that stuff, you know, it comes into play, and I think that's the respect a lot of guys have for you uh, in this business. You, you Like, you, you're a great guy. And you go about your business, and you're hard working, so that's a plus. I mean, that, that's what, that's what I would say when I when I see you. I think you get a lot of stuff done. Um, you know, whether it's recruiting or on the floor, and I mean, it's just a lot of stuff. Um, you know, on the floor stuff, and like you talk about with scouting reports, and so all those things are terrific. Right. Um, and I, and this this could be an easy answer as well because I'm gonna ask this, but like, what person and or event? has had the most influence on your life? Mm. I, I'm obviously my parents, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a say, I'm a say my high school coach, my high school coach, um, you know, for those, for those who don't know, I mean, he's, I think he's one of the winningest high school coaches in Virginia. Uh, and, uh, you know, he always, he was hard on me, but he was always found a way to motivate me. Uh, like, I, I, I think I might've put it out one time that he, uh, you know, when I was going into high school to play as a ninth grader, he used to always call me and, you know, it was early, probably like seven in the morning. He'd always call and say, uh, while you're at home sleeping, there's somebody out working, and when when they uh when y'all meet, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna win the game or whatnot. And so, him him knowing that I was a competitor, I hated that. I hated that. I got right up, and <laughs> and and went to work. And so even even that throughout my career, like I started getting up at six in the morning and working out in the mornings before school, and. You know, I would do one later on in the day. He would still say it, and I just didn't want anybody to outwork me. And so I think that that kind of helped um, instill some of the some of the traits that I have now. Awesome. Um, it was and speaking of that, your high school coach. Now, how, how long was he there? And and I got to remember if this guy did play there. This was around my era. Was it Doug Day, one of the best players to play? Is that Doug Day, right? Doug Day played at Blacksburg. Blacksburg, Blacksburg okay. High, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just I can't remember that. I just remember 
he was around the, he the same age as me, I think, 1989. They might have – I know that they were, like, pretty good. I want to say they may have ended up winning states. I can't remember, but I, I think it was – they were a pretty good team thing, back man. then. You could shoot that thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little before your time, but I yeah. just remember that. He played, um, at, he played at Ref University, I remember, as a young one, going to the games and, and watching it, though. Yeah. I think, was that with Don, Don Burgess and all of them? Like, I remember yeah. – Don yeah. Burgess, yeah, so yeah. we're good friends to this day with Don Burgess. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this before, and we get we got to come back to this too, but, like, what energizes you and brings you excitement? Um, just just in, in anything or, or on the court? It could be uh, anything. You know, just just for me, um, and it's gonna sound cliche, but just having another day to to, to live and, and try to impact, um, you know that that really that really helps me get going. You know, even on days where you know you don't you don't feel like getting up <laughs> and uh, and doing things, you just gotta kind of remind yourself, hey man, you know, you know you gotta get some stuff done today. Um, so yeah, I would say that, um, on the court, on the court, probably just, uh, let me go back. So when I was a player, uh, what always, what always got me fired up was just the, the thought of winning my matchup. So. You know, when I play pickup, I'm like, yeah, I, I got excited to play pickup because I, I wanted to, I wanted to cook somebody, <laughs> and that, and that was, that was my motivation, <laughs> um, um, then. So, uh, but now I would say it's the same. Just, you know, I want to, I want to win, I want to win, I want to beat, you know, the teams in our league. I want to beat the high majors that we play on the road. You know, I think that that's what gets me going. Awesome. Um, and we got to go back to this. Like, what was the strangest thing a player's done outside of the basketball court? Anything pop in your mind? No, nah, man, I mean, I, I got some crazy things, but I ain't trying to get into it. But strange is I don't have, I don't have one for strange. Crazy, strange, and it don't have to be names. It's something that's like this jumped out at me. <laughs> uh, sheesh. You got you stumped me on this one. You stumped me on this one, man. Sheesh. I I don't, I don't got one for you, more man. I ain't, I ain't got one for you. I, but we, look, we we know we got one in we got a couple in common with two guys we named. <laughs> so hey, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna unmask, unmask everything. <laughs> I understand. I got you. So, <laughs> like this is the last question I always like to ask. Like knowing what you know now, like what would you tell your younger self to prepare for as an assistant coach? Um, I would say. I would say study more of I would say study more of the administrative side of it um, and get to know more of those people you know i think I think that's important, and I wish I would have known this going going back, especially to my Wofford days and and earlier uh in my career it's just you know, how much those people can help you, um, you know, because, yeah, yeah, the, the coach and you know, your peers might might say great things about you, but if you have a recommendation coming from your president or or your AD or, you know, senior administrator, you know, I think that might go even further for you. Um, so not that I did a bad job, but I think I could have built a relation, better relationships with them. It's, it's interesting you say that because I spoke the other night to my alma mater. My teammate is a head coach there now. 
And that was the one thing I said to them, why are you on campus? Get to know the dean, of, you know, the dean of your department, get to know the, you know, get to know the provost, the president, like boosters, alums, because you're going to like, you don't know what's going to happen. And you can need, you know, you're going to need those people down the road, especially like you get into coaching, like, you know, they can always help you like another job interview, pick up the phone, but you talking about you want to be in coaching or you want to be in administration somewhere, those relationships can take you a long way. And I, and that's one thing I would take as well. Like stop just being like knowing, you know, small department or you worried about men's basketball, women's basketball and really nothing else. Right. Just get to know everybody because it can help. It definitely can help you for the future. Mm -hmm. Well, hey Shane, I want to thank you again, man, for being a guest on the show and being unmasked. Anything you want to leave with the people before we we sign off? No, nah, man, I appreciate you. You always been, you know, one hundred solid with me. You know, ever since we met in United Faith Gym back when you was at American, uh, a long time, wasn't it? <laughs> but, <laughs> it was uh, a long time. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I appreciate, you know, your friendship and, you know, you're a great guy. And, you know, I wish the best for you. Thank you, man. I appreciate those words. And I want to thank you viewers for watching another great show. Stay tuned for the next guest as we get them unmasked. See you next time and stay safe.